Hello, sir. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, you're able to come to many colleges and give many, many more speeches. And I think it's <coughs> just a single life, right? And you're able to achieve more than what one can imagine. A big foundation, Isha, Yoga, mind, and many more centers, many more disciplines. It's all in a single life, right? Uh, if a common man wants to take this by simple efforts and hard work, I think it will take at least up to three generations. And you have done it within a single life. So what's the secret behind your success? As a child, did you blow soap bubbles? Soap bubbles. So when you blew soap bubbles, have you seen somebody got this big bubble, you got only this big bubble? We must hold our breath and leave it slow, then we'd get a big bubble. Everything has. <laughs> Everybody had air in the lungs, but somebody got a big bubble, somebody got a small bubble. What is this about? See, when it comes to body, this is my body, that is your body, hundred percent clear, no confusion about this, isn't it? This is my body, that is your body. This is my mind, that is your mind. But when it comes to life, there is no such thing as my life and your life. This is a living cosmos. How much life will you capture within your system will determine the size and scope of your life. Somebody got a big bubble, somebody else got a small bubble, poop, it went off. You cannot identify where is my air and where is your air, isn't it? So similarly when it comes to life, there is no such thing as my life and your life, but distinctly my body and your body, my mind and your mind, but no my life and your life. There is life, abundant life, this is a living cosmos. How much life will you capture within yourself will determine the scope and range of your life. What one person can do in hundred years, somebody may do it in ten years. Because of the sheer intensity of life, when I say intensity of life, it may translate in many different ways. See, there are times, for example, certain businesses have grown. Let us say uh, some business like, uh, you know, in the United States this become a fad, within three years somebody's billions of dollars of worth of business. Let us say Microsoft has grown or Facebook has grown or something like this has grown. This is largely because of technological breakthroughs and somebody writes that technology. At another time, that would not have happened. So that is different. But if you want to create something really large, really significant, large or small is not the point, significance, then you need intensity of life. One thing is the scale of life that you capture, there are… this is what I said earlier when I said yoga, obliterating in boundaries of your individuality means, in a way you are allowing universe to invade you. When universe is not against you but it invades you or it's a part of you, then you have abundance of life. When you have abundance of life, you will not hesitate to share. When you share big time your life with everybody else, people will naturally value it immensely because everybody is trying to hold it, somebody is willing to share it, so naturally there will be a big upsurge around you. This will lead to many things. This will make many friends and many enemies <laughs> A <laughs> lot of people whom you have never met, they are your sworn enemies, but you don't know why. You never met them, you never had a word with them, but they are swearing that I am his enemy. I don't know why, but it goes on in the world. So when we talk about how so much can be done in a short span of time, 
It's not a short span of time, it's thirty-seven years. Incessant work, seven days of the week, twenty hours a day, almost for twenty-five years, more than twenty-five years. On an average, I slept only for two and a half hours a day. Not deprived of sleep, just kept my life energy so intense that sleep was not even an issue. There are times when I've gone without sleep for three days, four days, full-scale working. Not because you're uh, on some kind of a drug and not sleeping, simply because of the intensity of purpose and commitment to what you're doing. Today I can proudly say, I have created thousands of people around me, all of them have gotten crazy like that. <laughs> They're all beginning to work like this. Most of them, you don't know when they will sleep, when they will wake up, on, 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 seven days of the week. No holidays, no vacations, but everybody is joyful. If you come to the yoga center and see, you will see the most joyful faces, but they've never been on a vacation. They don't own a damn thing, they don't have money in their pockets, but they're just joyful <laughs> because uh, drunk with life, literally. Well, it's like this. Have you noticed on a certain day, if you're very, very joyful and blissed out, you are willing to do whatever is needed, no problem, isn't it? Any amount of work, but little frustration, your feet will drag. So I have not known first frustration at all in the last thirty-seven years. Not that everything goes right, many things don't happen the way I want. In fact, nothing happens the way I want, <laughs> that's a fact <laughs> Because what I want is up there, it is always an incremental success of everything. But because of the sheer intensity of purpose and focus, when some moments we started and people gathered in millions, Somebody told me, a very prominent person in the country, Sadhguru, this kind of crowds happened only when uh, <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi came. I said, no, see, don't compare because Mahatma Gandhi had a huge advantage. He had an enemy. There was somebody to fight. When you have an enemy, you can gather masses. Now, my whole thing is, I'm constantly reminding people, there is only one enemy in your life, that's you. If you fix this one person, everything is fine with you. Yes or no? You have only one enemy, that's yourself. If you fix this one person, this is a wonderful life. So, when there is no external enemy, Moving people towards a purpose is very difficult. But people have moved wonderfully, not just in India, around the world. People are putting lot of pressure <laughs> in various countries. Sadhguru, you've done enough in India, you must come and stay here, stay there, do this, do that. Why I'm telling you this is, you are young people. Each one of you, if you become a dynamo, of energy and activity, this country, which is a nation of young people, will prosper and become a miracle like no other because we have the largest number of young people. If you get the necessary intensity and balance within you, this is important, intensity without balance will make you go crazy. If you have intensity and balance, we can make a miracle out of this nation. All the problems that we are seeing in this country can be a thing of the past in a matter of ten years' time, not too long. If you look at nations, if you look at the history of this world, the only country which has moved a large segment of population from poverty to affluence in one generation is the China but they did it with lot of force and pain, too much pain. Millions have died, so much pain, so much force. 
But today, India as a nation, we are sitting on a threshold that through a democratic process, if all of us do the right things in the next five, ten years' time, through a democratic process, without a gun, without bloodshed, we can move a billion people from one level of living to another. This kind of thing has never happened in the history of humanity. Right now, India is sitting on that cusp that if we do the right things in the next five, ten years' time, you will see this nation transforming. Without guns, without blood, without those kind of revolutions, simply through democratic process we can do, we are sitting on the threshold. It is just that we should not sit on the threshold for too long. We must take the next step and the next step and that is in our hands as a generation of people, we need to do that.